मदन मोहन मालवीय प्रौद्योगिकी विश्वविद्यालय के चतुर्थ दीक्षांत समारोह में उत्तर प्रदेश की राज्यपाल आनंदी बेन पटेल और मुख्यमंत्री योगी आदित्यनाथ के साथ दीक्षांत समारोह में इन्फोसिस के सह संस्थापक एन आर नारायण मूर्ति भी शामिल हुए मदन मोहन मालवीय प्रौद्योगिकी विश्वविद्यालय के चतुर्थ दीक्षांत समारोह के अवसर पर दो हजार में बी टेक एम टेक एम एवं पी उपाधि के लिए अहर्ता प्राप्त नौ छात्र छात्राओं को दीक्षोपोदेश और उपाधि दी गई दीक्षांत समारोह में मदन मोहन मालवीय प्रौद्योगिकी विश्वविद्यालय की ओर से उत्तर प्रदेश के राज्यपाल आनंदी बेन पटेल ने इन्फोसिस के सह संस्थापक इंजीनियर नागवार रामा राव नारायण मूर्ति को डीएससी की मानद उपाधि से विभूषित किया गया मानद उपाधि प्राप्त करने के बाद इन्फोसिस के सह संस्थापक इंजीनियर नागवार रामा राव नारायण मूर्ति ने दीक्षांत समारोह में आए प्रौद्योगिकी विश्वविद्यालय के बीटेक एमटेक एमबीए एमसीए एवं पीएचडी के छात्र छात्राओं को संबोधित करते हुए कहा कि एम 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 प्रौद्योगिकी विश्वविद्यालय के दीक्षा समारोह में बतौर विशिष्ट अतिथि पद्म विभूषण नारायण मूर्ति ने कहा कि तिरंगा लहराते हुए जोर जोर से जय हो और मेरा भारत महान कहना आसान है लेकिन ऐसा करने के लिए जिन मूल्यों की जरूरत है उसे बनाए रखना बचाए रखना दुष्कर है नारायण मूर्ति ने कहा कि बोलने की स्वतंत्रता भय में स्वतंत्रता चाहने की स्वतंत्रता जैसे मूल्य देश के स्वर्णिम भविष्य के लिए आवश्यक है उपाधि प्राप्त कर रहे युवाओं को इन बातों का ख्याल रखना होगा दीक्षांत भाषण में नारायण मूर्ति ने युवाओं को नया भारत गढ़ने के लिए अपना सर्वश्रेष्ठ प्रयास करने का आह्वान किया उन्होंने कहा कि भारत में आज जरूर माहौल बदला है अर्थव्यवस्था में सुधार है निवेशकों का भरोसा बढ़ा है भारत दुनिया का सॉफ्टवेयर हब बन रहा है शेयर बाजार में उमंग है लेकिन इसके साथ एक दूसरी तस्वीर है जहां भुखमरी कुपोषण और भ्रष्टाचार है पीने का पानी तक मुहाल है एक अनिश्चित भविष्य है युवाओं को इन दोनों तस्वीरों को देखना होगा भविष्य का भारत कैसा होगा ये युवा ही तय करें दीक्षांत समारोह में उत्तर प्रदेश की राज्यपाल आनंदी बेन पटेल और मुख्यमंत्री योगी आदित्यनाथ के साथ दीक्षांत समारोह में इन्फोसिस के सह संस्थापक एन आर नारायण मूर्ति सहित विश्वविद्यालय के शिक्षक गणों सहित बड़ी संख्या में छात्र छात्राएं मौजूद रहे कृपया मां सरस्वती तथा महामना मालवीय जी के चित्र पर माल्यार्पण कर to be part of this joyous occasion thank you also for your kindness in awarding me an honorary doctorate dear graduate students i congratulate you on your successful completion of the degree you are among the small number of privileged students to have received your education from a university in india this is the first time to use that or oh, this is the proper time to use that education to make india a better country for every citizen today i will use this speech very similar to the one that i gave some years ago at the convocation of another well known educational institution the reason is very simple Every passing out graduate in India has similar responsibilities to realize and make this a better country. As I stand here, I see an extraordinary India. Never before in the last several hundred years did India receive respect from the world community like she does today. Never before did the world think India had something to contribute to the global community. Spices. Our economy is growing at six to seven percent this year. India has become the software development center of the world. Our foreign exchange reserves have crossed four hundred billion dollars. Investor confidence is at a historic high. Portfolio investment from abroad and foreign direct investment into India are growing faster than ever. Entrepreneurs are receiving huge funding from venture capitalists from all over the world. Our stock exchanges are doing pretty well. 
According to the Forbes magazine, the number of billionaires in India is increasing. All these look very fine. However, we have another India steeped in deep poverty, illiteracy, ill health and malnutrition and without hope or confidence in the future. For no fault of hers, we have the largest mass of illiterates in the world. About 350 million Indians cannot read or write. More than 200 million Indians do not have access to safe drinking water. About 750 million Indians do not have access to sanitation facilities that you and I are used to. We have consistently been among the lowly ranked nations in the Human Development Index. Not surprisingly, we rank very high on corruption. Our record in primary and higher education is not very good. I can go on and on. Worst of all, we have created an environment where bright, idealistic and confident youngsters like you who are ready to take on the world in their 20s become despondent, diffident, self-seeking and unhappy individuals by the time they reach their 40th year. My friends, this is not how a great nation is built. Maintaining the idealism, confidence, hope, energy and enthusiasm of every Indian is mandatory if we have to make good on the dreams of the founders of this nation. Be that as it may, there is hope today for us to solve this problem. For the first time in 300 years, we have an economic environment that engenders confidence that we can indeed overcome our poverty and create a better India, a better future, better happiness for every Indian. If we try hard, we can wipe the tears from the eyes of the poorest to the poor child, as Mahatma Gandhi wanted. I do see significant changes around me that tell me that the angels of today will dispel the darkness around us and make this a better country for every one of us. The urban and the rural, the rich and the poor, and the educated and the not so well educated. That 30 years from now, this country will have a set of 50 to 60 year old who will be different from the current 74 year olds like me. They will be full of confidence, hope, and faith in the country. They will create a developed India, an India without problems of poverty, illiteracy, malnutrition, and sicknesses. They will get respect wherever they go for their accomplishments and for the accomplishments of their country. At that time, every nation would want to trade with us. At that time, foreigners would want to come and study here. Let me tell you that such a transformation will not be very, will not be an easy task. However, that rare opportunity has been given to you. We are not given such opportunities when we were students in the 1960s. So, Coach Kabir Khan and those wonderful women hockey players in the movie Chak De India provided the recipe for bringing such a glory to India. The recipe, my friends, is simple to enunciate but hard to follow. We have to be, we have to identify ourselves as Indians first and rise above our affiliations with our states, religions and castes. We have to rise the confidence of every Indian by aggressively working towards freedom of faith, freedom of expression, freedom from fear and freedom from war. We must accept meritocracy and enthusiastically play the role that we are best suited to. We must embrace discipline to strictly follow every step required for success. Such adherence to discipline in following processes is what will lead to consistency in success. We have to to put the interests of our nation ahead of our personal interests, subordinating our egos and biases. We have to constantly compare ourselves with countries better than us and learn from them. We have to shun apathy and become proactive in solving the problems of our society rather than expecting others to do it. Our governments have to become more citizen friendly 
and remove all obstacles to entrepreneurs to create larger and larger number of jobs. Our economic policies have to be less populist and more based on expertise. We have to shun egoism. Finally, and we have to put in tremendous hard work and make short-term sacrifices for long-term glory. We have to be optimistic and courageous. Leading by example, as Mahatma Gandhi said, is the most powerful advice you can give to anybody. While it is easy to drape ourselves in our national flag and shout Mera Bharat Mahan or Jai Ho, it is difficult to practice the values I have described. Practicing the values is what patriotism is all about and what will bring the best out of every citizen. I have immense faith and optimism in every one of you, the youth of this country. I pray that God gives you the strength, resolve and most importantly character to make India succeed. The hope of this nation rests on you. It is unlikely that we will get such a fantastic opportunity anytime in the foreseeable future again. Please seize this opportunity with both hands and succeed. Have fun. A happy mind will achieve great things. Thank you very much.